the life stream has two shores, one silent and one active. And the whole span between active and silent, these two extreme areas, this whole range is the range of the stream of our life. One bank is active, the other is silent, and in between this activity and silent flows the river of life. Or, another example, the surface of the stream, very active, the depth of the stream, very silent. So the surface value of life, very active, depth of life, very silent, eternally silent, immovable, stable, infinite, eternal, non-changing, absolute. So that absolute and this relative, this relative on the surface of life, on the sensory level of activity, that absolute at the depth of our consciousness, the depth of our intelligence, depth of our ex existence. So, this activity and that silence. This is what constitutes our life. That quiet room of life, that active room of life, hmm? that bedroom, very quiet. When we enter, we begin to sleep there. This is very living room, everyone coming, going here, there, they are very active. So these are the different chambers of our life. If we are not acquainted with the bedroom, it will be hard to rest. All the time in the living room, no good. When the architect designs a building, he designs according to your requirement. How many, how many living rooms you have, you want, how many bedrooms you need, how many studies you need, depending on your status. When the Creator designed this human nervous system, He designed it with innumerable chambers. Anywhere you go and enjoy, everywhere you should go and everything you should enjoy infinite silence you should enjoy. And then, infinite silence you should enjoy when you are infinitely dynamic. Design, different designs of life. All the designs contained in human nervous system. Before we started to meditate, we have only been active, active. Either active or sleep not even knowing what rest means. And someone <laughs> who has not the ability to enjoy even sleep, can we think he can really enjoy the waking? One doesn't have even the ability to, 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 to know what sleep is. It's a very great astonishing feature of life. One thinks one is living, but where is the living? One doesn't know. Not even have the ability to sleep, to know what sleep is. So one doesn't know, when one doesn't know what ignorance is, how can one have the ability to know what knowledge is? It's a very paralyzing state, deeply paralyzing. Hmm? We have the whole possibility. Now, in our meditation what we do? Automatically we create a situation so that that never changing infinite, unbounded level of life may become our direct experience. 
it is our own nature one extreme aspect of our nature <coughs> unmanifest non active and one ex- an- another extreme aspect of our nature very active what we want to do is <coughs> we are not satisfied by sometimes experiencing this and sometimes experiencing this it's good for a variety but a greater fun will be to experience this when we are yet here we want to draw them both together we want to integrate the two extremes of our life we want to integrate the two extreme ends of our life so that when we are enjoying one extreme we are not at a loss of the other both infinite silence when we are infinitely active and then we will say yes we are making full use of our life otherwise we will always be only partially exposed to life we are either active or silent either active or silent the real joy of activity will be when we could be really silent and yet at the same time be really active silent and active and when this will be only when our awareness is steadfast in that unboundedness of life in that transcendental value of being when our awareness is steadfast huh? when that unboundedness of being never leaves our awareness and this will be by going and shaking hand with it and coming back and shaking hand with it and coming back a few times shaken hand and then it comes out never leaves us because mind is by nature desirous of enjoying more and more and therefore it is the nature of the mind that makes that awareness cling on to it that unbounded awareness clings on to the nature of the mind because that is bliss infinite eternal freedom which the mind wants and because uh, its nature is what the mind wants and because the nature of the mind is to want it mind wants to enjoy more and that is bliss in its nature both together cling on to each other and when we live bliss consciousness in whatever we do in all moments of our activity and rest when we are not separate from that unbounded bliss consciousness then we start living fullness of life until then we are seeking for that fulfillment when we have started to live that fullness then actually human life has started to be lived otherwise we have started living no it's just as a man who does ma in literature he knows what a joy is there in literature a boy comes from kindergarten and he says a b c d and he feels so good he has known what language is he has that joy but a man in ma he says yes yes uh, you will learn gradually and the boy feels i have already learned i know what it is <laughs> it's just like that living waking dreaming sleeping consciousness one thinks one is living life but when one transcends and has a glimpse of that unbounded reality oh one says oh 
I was not living life till now, because where is life in ever-changing realities? Life is in that unboundedness, which is so fulfilling, which is so heartening, which is so charming, which is so absorbing, and that is myself. And then one immediately attributes that to be himself, I am that. And with this, one starts to feel that, yeah, I have gained the Self, I have realized the Self, even though, even before the Self was not lost, only it was not open to my awareness. And once it is open to my awareness, I know, oh, I have realized the Self. It's just like having the glasses on the eyes and then starting to search for the glasses. Where are the glasses? Where are the glasses? And someone says, there you are. Oh, found, thank you. <laughs> the Self was never lost. That unboundedness, that restful alertness, that infinite value, that abstract, unmanifest value of life was never lost. Only I had never opened that door, that's all. I had never been to that area, so I didn't know what it was. But once I opened that door, I found, ah, this is the source of all the glory of life, and this is my reality. Even though these changing values in the activity of life, they are also my values, but then when that is located, then I say, I have realized the Self, as if all this field of activity is not worthwhile calling the Self. All this field of activity which I called life before, doesn't seem to be worthwhile the name of life. What I am? That unbounded, infinite, eternal as if I am not this. Huh? Not that I am not this, but as if I am not this, but that unbounded is I. Hmm? This is what uh, uh, makes the difference, you realize the Self. And as long as one has not been to that area, One says, I want to realize the Self. I want to see, I want to realize the Self. I am practicing Self-realization. <laughs> as if, as if this field of activity, this field of waking, dreaming, sleeping states of consciousness, as if this is not myself, I am trying to realize the Self. And when one's awareness opens to that, one says, Oh, I have realized the Self, I know what it is. Unbounded, eternal, infinite, absolute bliss consciousness. That I am. Hmm? Even though... <laughs> always, the skin of an orange is bitter. Always the skin is bitter, and it's, a, it's as much a part of the orange as the inner sweet juice. Bitter skin and inner sweet juice, both are equally the part of orange. But when we buy orange, we ask the man, is it sweet? We know the skin is bitter, but we don't call orange in terms of bitterness of the skin, sweet juice. Just like that, the surface value of life, <coughs> active value of life, waking, dreaming, sleeping states of consciousness, they are as much a part of the Self as this unbounded transcendental awareness. Only this is inner area of life and this is 
outer area of life. Both are equally the part of life. Not that I am only that unbounded and I am not this bound. I am bound also, I am unbounded also. This is boundaries belong to the surface value of my life. Unboundedness belongs to the depth of my life. Both together go to make a stream of life. No stream is uh, devoid of two banks. Every stream has two banks, like that, like that. Like that, every stream of life, every individual life has on one side this infinite, unbounded, non-active, unmanifest being, bliss, and on the other side, change, non-activity, relativity, hmm? field of change. These non-changing, immortal being and changing, mortal, relative surface of life, both together go to make life. Not only I am that, not only I am that, but I am this also, and this is also that. Hmm? Not only that unmanifest, unbounded, transcendental is myself, but I am this also, and this also is that. Hmm? Not only the sap is unmanifest, but this also is sap, this also is sap, this also is sap. Huh? The yellow and white and green and deep green, all these different shades are the same shadeless, colorless, unmanifest sap. So to say that sap is the reality of the this plant and this and this, 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 they're not the realities, will not be right. Hmm? This is the manifest reality and the sap is the unmanifest reality. So the manifest reality and unmanifest reality both together go to make a reality and that we write with big R. Because it has two together, the unmanifest realities so many innumerable relative unmanifest realities and then um, manifest reality is so many innumerable and that unmanifest reality. So both together go to make one life, life. Hmm? So it's not that I am only that, no, I am this also and that also. This is my manifest reality, that is my unmanifest reality, and in meditation I take a journey to that area of my life. In activity I come out and roam about in this area of life. So sometimes I take a, take a walk on this side, sometimes I take a walk on this side, and both sides seem to be very complementary to each other. Rest and activity and rest and activity and rest and activity and a time comes that restful activity becomes a reality. If the activity is restful activity, then the real joy of activity. As long as activity is tiring activity, it's no good. What we want is restful activity action and rest simultaneously, we are not devoid of our link with the infinite when we are playing about in the finite, hmm? then, then our activity will be like the activity of that arrow which does not lose the momentum of, of strength which it has gained when it was pulled. 
So with full momentum the arrow is flying, never loses the momentum. Mind never loses that awareness, that awareness, that unbounded awareness becomes an all-time reality wherever, whatever the mind is engaged in, that never goes. Hmm? Restful activity, spontaneously restful activity. When the action is restful, then action is a joy in its process. It's a greater joy in its results, but it's no more tiring and tedious when one is acting. This spontaneous situation we create through practice of transcendental meditation. We call it transcendental meditation because it takes our mind, it takes our awareness to that unbounded transcendental area. Transcendental area which transcends all the relativity, transcends all field of change. Hmm? So the whole procedure is automatic because this surface value of activity and the depth of life, the, they are the two areas of what we call life. Life is structured in these two values simultaneously, activity and non-activity, just as the flower is structured in two values, this white of the petal and the colorless sap in every fiber of the petal. So unmanifest value and manifest value, both values go to structure an existence. So relative and absolute, unmanifest and manifest, both these go to structure one life. And when we want to live fullness of life, we investigate into what that unmanifest is and create a situation so that that unmanifest, unbounded, never goes out of our awareness. It's there all the time, no matter what we are doing. Hmm? And then every activity shines, flourishes. When the sap is supporting every little bit of the petal, when the sap is supporting the petal, when there is no discoordination between the petal and the sap, then the petal enjoys strength life, glory, full bloom, blossom of the flower. And if the sap loses the contact, the, the, the petal loses the contact of the sap, the petal will just not be found, that's all. Less contact with the sap, less life of the petal, less joy of the petal more contact with the sap, more life of the petal, more joy of the petal. So the surface manifest value of life is richer when the awareness of the unmanifest is more solidly established. With that establishment of unbounded awareness, every aspect of life is in tune with that infinite value of life. And when every boundary of life, every little bit of life is in tune with that boundless aspect of life, then every aspect is strong, flourishing, fresh, encouraging. Then every aspect blooms in life. Otherwise, every aspect loses life. The whole purpose of integrating the inner silence with outer activity 
and creating a spontaneous situation that both activity and silence continue to be at all times. The whole purpose of this is to live fullness of life. Use this machine to the fullest value and not let any value of it be ignored because it's a loss to the owner. Human, this nervous system is the machine that we have owned, better make full use of it. And the whole design of the machine is such that completeness of life must be lived at all moments, whether they are our moments of rest or activity. <laughs>